I would say that you know you're very committed to revealing human potential, mm -hmm. and which is why you're you know you go to bed early. Uh, you just have you just have great structure to you know allow yourself to reveal what is the greatest human potential of health of creativity of expression and um, as such you re you work really well with athletes yeah um, so I, I always get so inspired by person real stories of someone that you've worked with especially like yeah. a pro athlete who's yeah. elite at what they do yeah. already but then they hit a roadblock and you help to remove that constraint in their mind to free them up so they can be in the present and access that flow. Yes. Can yeah, you yeah. share what, you know, a story about a pro athlete and the transformation that you help them achieve? Sure. I mean, it's, it's so fun. I mean, we're both athletes in our own regard, right? Like we love to be active and take care of our bodies. And I certainly love playing sports. So when I got first introduced to a professional athlete as the opportunity to help them as a client, it was just, you know, it was very exciting. This is like 15 plus years ago, but it was, so fun to see how this shit works <laughs> like it's not it's not hypothetical it's not theoretical it's like wow i have a conversation with someone and obviously the degree to which they they assimilate they get it they integrate it and they can apply it then we get results pretty much instantaneously so i think one of the first ones that was and i literally had one coming down here you know to see you uh like i was on a call with one of my baseball players so i'll share that too like it sort cool. of gave me you know, makes their hairs on the back of my neck stand up. But um, the one that comes to mind because it was so early in my career working with athletes was another baseball player who he, in in sort of the stereotypes of baseball players, you've got the big hitters who sort of do the 20, 30 plus homers a, a season. You've got the small guys who are more utility and they might be good shortstops and they have other roles, but they're not big hitters and, you know, they, they play their part and they might get five to six home runs in a season. And this guy was sort of middle of the road. He was a solid athlete. And he would typically in his career have gotten 12 to 16 home runs. And over the course, over the span of almost an entire season, albeit it was across two seasons, so sort of from, you know, towards the second month of the previous season, and now we're into the end of the first month of the next season, he hadn't had a home run. And it was just, you know, a pro athlete who's getting paid millions of dollars to perform and somebody who was proud of his contribution to the team. It was starting to really irk him, you know. And so he called me one day from the parking lot of the field. And this is prior to a game. And we were talking about it and he's like, you know, I'm just pissed and guy kind of mentality of a locker room. You can imagine he was getting teased and, the, the, you know, the, the they're his buddies, they're his teammates. They're saying, don't worry about it, you're not a big hitter, like you're not a power guy, don't worry. You know, like, so they're just messing with it, which of course is only exacerbating his frustrations, even though it's in jest. And um, so he you know, and I were just talking about it, and I said, listen, I always like to take people to what seems like you know counterproductive, but worst case scenario. So I said, if I told you for the rest of your career, you never hit a home run again. And he probably still, you know, very reasonably had a good five, six years available, you know, as a professional athlete to him based on his age and his, his health. And um, I said, would you be OK with that? Now, when the mind is first confronted with a worst case scenario, which is, of course, like the genesis of the fear, you know, so I'm really taking people to the fear, holding a space of love and safety so that they can be with it and realize, actually, I am OK. You know, there's usually hesitation, like, because he, of course, he doesn't want that. He's an athlete. He's performing. He wants to do well. So I understand the context. But I said to him, could you be OK with that? Like, I know that's not what we want. That's not what I'm wishing for you. But could you find a place within yourself that you could find some peace? that if that were to happen, that you would contribute in other ways and you could have a great career. So, of course, like I'm holding his hand through the process and eventually he gets to the yes. And I like to bring a lot of humor and I'm like, you know, so what do I need to call your mom? <laughs> <laughs> um, so he got to this point, and he's like, yeah. And I said, so how does that feel? And he's like, it just feels like a weight off. You know, I just feel like relief. And I'm like, yeah, because what we've done is we've collapsed time. You're, you're sort of dragging your history around, which is the reflection of what you haven't had. And the brain, which is designed to predict and protect, is now superimposing that unfulfilled history into a potential future that is in the moment creating this angst and concern. So if we can like 
mitigate and reconcile all of it, then all of a sudden you're free, which is the sensation of relief that you just got. He's like, yeah, it's like, it's not what I want, but I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you could almost feel just in his voice, his shoulders drop and his breathing cadence change. So that was probably about three o'clock in the afternoon. The guys get there about three, four hours before a game. And we were playing the Cardinals. This was for the Arizona Diamondbacks I was helping at the time. And uh, his second at bat, oh my gosh, home run. I mean, he, the text he sent me was like, you know, it's sort of making my cheeks tingle, but it's just, you know, the joy mm-hmm. of like the, and the irony is it goes back to a question about purpose and freedom. That happened in the absence of him. Mm-hmm. That's that flow. You know, and this will lead into the story that I had driving down here, where it was no longer the human being, the idea of himself with a history that was littered with the absence of a home run and therefore frustration and depression and anxiety into the future that this might be perpetuated. But in the absence of all of that narrative, which itself is the constraint, he was at peace. And in a state of peace, an athlete who has arguably had millions of swings at a baseball bat, there's a unconscious response to a ball coming to him where there's no thinking required and so it was actually the dissolution of the part of him that was in the way of his ability to hit a home run without quote unquote thinking about it Mm -hmm. so anyway his text was just so full of joy and it was that was like really sort of the foray for me into like recognizing the power of the mind over someone's ability to perform once they quote unquote get out of their own way Mm -hmm. which again is like something that i hear so often from my athletes, you know, if if only I could get out of my own way. So that's sort of in itself, even in the languaging, it points to the idea of like, I could get out of my own way. There's sort of this, this almost bipolarism in the way that we relate to ourselves, right? There's the essence of my capabilities. And then there's this frailty of the part of me that's scared that sort of is the constraint to that being expressed. So, so this happened last night, literally last night, uh, as one of my favorite athletes I've worked with now for six, seven years. He's an extraordinary first baseman. He's now with the Cardinals. And um, I met him at the Diamondbacks too. But just just one of my favorite human beings, just because he's such a good guy, let alone an incredible athlete. But he's working with me through the season. So this was our scheduled call today. And he said, you know, last night, it's just so crazy. He said, like, I was 0 for 4, which in baseball means he's had four bats and he hasn't had a hit. And honestly, in his mind, he's like, they were pretty ugly. You know, I've swung at some bad pitches. And so for an athlete who knows their capabilities and has done this literally thousands of times, like there could be a degree of accumulated frustration as he's 0 for 1, 0 for 2, 0 for 3. And then you see guys slamming bats in the dugout and whatever. Yes. So he's done all of this work now. And he said, you know, what's crazy is it was a tied game. And he went to over. Uh, he said he went out to defend, you know, after his fourth at bat, and he started having this conversation with himself. And he, you know, he was applying one of my quotes: "Is what happened happened and couldn't have happened any other way because it didn't, right?" Which is his ability to then go, you know what? I'm over four. Like, am I going to like cry over spilt milk and hold on to that, which is creating tension? He could feel it when he was in the field. And he's like, "Or can I just make some great defensive plays and maybe I'll get another at bat?" Which it turned out he did because it went to 11 innings because it was a tight game. Wow. So he steps into the bat for the fifth, uh, steps into the box for the fifth time. And he's now found what we termed surrender. You know, I said, like similar to you, I said it was the dissolution of the you that could have been frustrated, holding on to a history and then constantly worrying about the same thing being repeated, which again, another athlete that you introduced me to actually with DeAndre with the NBA, same thing, mm-hmm. right? So worrying about a future that hasn't happened yet creates tension in the moment which for an athlete is you know a complete kryptonite so anyway you know you probably guess the end of the story but he steps into the batter's box oh my god home run they win the game oh my god and he was just so tickle pink he's like if it weren't for that he said that probably wouldn't have happened if it weren't for the work that we've done for me to be able to reconcile and surrender to my history fully accept it And then he said, honestly, I don't even remember. He said, my swing in the first four felt like it was terrible. And he said, as far as I know, it wasn't even a better swing in my fifth at bat, but I wasn't worried about an outcome. And his brain and his body, which again has literally done this process a million times, knew how to respond to the external event, which in this case was a pitcher throwing a ball. And so there's the, often that commentary in media after a game where they're, they're like, what were you thinking about? It's like, I don't know. It's just, it's the absence of the persona. Mm-hmm. And in the absence of the eye that's trying to do something, then the event itself can happen effortlessly. 
and almost just as his own lesson, mm. it can't happen any other way because it didn't. Had he not gone over for thought of you and your quote, surrendered and went yeah. up there, the lesson wouldn't have driven home so much. Yeah. You know, because it was it gave him that suspense of yeah. oh I could build frustration. That's the natural thing. I could build mistrust in Peter or the universe or everything. This shit doesn't work and then all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, wow. Yeah. It's, it's even more impactful, you know. Uh, it's, and it, it appeals to one of my other, like we could say, main products, which is trust. Right? So, you know, trust is, I would assert, one of the hardest lessons for a human being to learn. Because the nature of life is uncertainty, which we've discussed, you and I, a lot, you know, just in our work together. And, you know, for an athlete, and certainly with a lot that I've dealt with, who could have had a lot of woe, as is often the case when you're at the highest level. You know, it's not like you're in high school and you're the best and then you're an amateur and you're the best. It's like, well, welcome to the big leagues, literally and figuratively. It ain't that easy, you know. Everybody's the best. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like I'm not getting the results that I'm accustomed to. And that itself can become an athlete's demise because there's this expectation. So trust is recognizing there is this divine intervention of some form that is taking you through whatever trials and tribulations you need in order to develop the, the values and the qualities that are the precursor to truly performing in whatever. You don't have to be an athlete. You could be at a stay-at-home parent or a teacher or um, an executive. But it's like, okay, where can I see that I'm not leaning into trust and in fact I have too much control there's too much manipulation there's too much predictability in my mind trying to figure everything out so for him it was also that that yes this couldn't have unfolded any other way because it didn't and for that reason I'm both accepting my history but I'm trusting my future thank you for listening to the heal podcast be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories oh and make sure you hit the follow button on apple spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for and if you feel inspired we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people and of course you can follow us on instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at, at @healdocumentary and at @kellygore Thank you so much and be well.